Hey friend, welcome back to Explaining Cloud Principles. So far, we've established the characteristics and traits that make a service fit the cloud computing definition. And we've also talked about some of the actors and roles that exist in the cloud ecosystem, like the provider, consumer, auditor, broker, and the carrier. This led us into a conversation around shared responsibility. And that's exactly where we're gonna pick things up by looking at the three different service models, infrastructure, platform, and software as a service, and how that responsibility shakes down across each one of those. In this first video, let's focus on maximizing control for the consumer by using infrastructure as a service. And so jumping right on in, we recognize that with infrastructure as a service, when we say that we're gaining more control, it's because the provider is leaving more aspects of this administration to us as consumers. So in infrastructure as a service, they're mostly focusing on uh, delivering it up to the virtualization layer. So this means they're running the data centers. This means that they're out there dealing with the physical infrastructure, the power, the actual systems and the racks that are out there, all the fans <laughs> blown in the data centers out there. Those are all directly the provider's responsibility in most of these scenarios. Keeping in mind again, friends, that when I say provider, it could be big public providers or it could be somebody in your organization, a technology team that delivers these services for you. On the flip side then, consumers are left with the ability to administer all of these other layers on top. And this is where that maximizing of control comes in. So this implies that while the provider is creating the virtual infrastructure for us, this would include things like the hypervisor as well. Uh, it means that us as consumers can then configure the virtual infrastructure that lives on top of it. This is gonna mean like creating virtual machines, creating the virtual network, controlling the IP addressing, the routing of traffic, creating gateways and ingress and egress points. And it also means that we're gonna be able to control how we protect those infrastructure components as well. So I might be creating a firewall rule and then telling the provider to implement that rule for me. In the end, this is a great example of how that shared responsibility works. As a consumer, I choose what traffic I want to allow, but the provider is ultimately responsible for following my instructions. This kind of goes back to that self-service principle that we were talking about previously as well. In order for this to work at scale for millions of customers all over the world, providers need a self-service way of allowing this relationship to exist. Furthermore, it also means that for a lot of organizations that have concerns around maximizing control, it means that they definitely still have control over some of the biggest important parts like the application, the data, and the authentication and authorization layers as well. Indeed, for a lot of them, they may pick up the existing tools they have in their data centers and just plop them directly down using a lift and shift sort of model. Uh, and this allows them to basically keep a lot of the same systems while simply swapping out some of the provider added value that goes with using an infrastructure structure as a service. So to kind of illustrate this just a, just a little smidgen, let's take a look over here at Amazon Web Services where I've got this pulled up already. And I am taking a look at AWS's virtual private cloud interface. This is basically their virtual networking service. You would use this service to build the networks that you want to use. And that would include defining your virtual private cloud. Okay, like these are the kind of the high level container the subnets, and those are gonna be like the small IP subnets where you could actually run virtual machines. And then it also supports things like creating the routing tables and the routes to control where traffic moves between your different endpoints. On top of that, you see internet gateways for selectively allowing networks to access the internet. Or if you look further on down here, they have things like NAT services, they also offer, even further on down, virtual private network services. So all of these are configurable virtual layers on top of the infrastructure that AWS is offering. You're gonna find comparable flavors of this in Microsoft Azure and in Google Cloud as well. And so in the end, friends, when we talk about infrastructure as a service, it's all about maximizing the layers of control that the consumer is able to effectively administer. Now this means that the shared responsibility model has consumers depending on service providers to manage the underlying infrastructure while we get to configure to a high degree on top of it. This is gonna include things like the virtual machines, configuring the virtual networks, configuring the routing, managing the firewalling of traffic, and of course, managing all of the operating system, application, and data layers that live on top of it. One of the most important principles to kind of ask yourself if you're going to begin studying for something like the Cloud Essentials Cert is to imagine what sort of maintenance activities this is going to require of you. It means that I, as a consumer, I'm not going to be patching and managing the hypervisors. I'm not gonna be dealing with firmware on the servers. I'm not gonna be handling power redundancy for the generators. Those are not concerns for me. 
as a consumer of infrastructure as a service, I will care about writing firewall rules. I will care about patching the operating systems, choosing what virtual machines I want to run, turning them on, turning them off, managing their survivability, and of course, all of the other application data and authentication layers that live on top of it. One of the last things to kind of keep in mind here is that when we talk about shared responsibility, there's often multiple different layers of administration. I will need permission as a consumer to build resources in a cloud service provider's environment. This is different than needing permissions to like log into a Windows domain that might be running in your cloud service provider's world. <laughs> so kind of keep those two worlds uh, separate. The service provider level permissions for creating cloud resources, and then all of the application level permissions that also go into using those services. In later service models coming up next, <laughs> we'll be talking about how that layer begins to uh, get pushed more and more off to the provider, leaving less controls for us as consumers, but remembering that this is often desirably so. So stick with me, friends. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at platform as a service. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.